In this video I'll show you an amazing workflow I used to create Studio Ghibli inspired anime in less than 24 hours using only AI generated pictures and basic knowledge of Adobe After Effects. To make this tutorial as clear as possible I'll go scene by scene explaining how I achieve different motions such as anime characters talking, blinking, breathing, door opening, clouds moving and more. I'll also show you how I maintained consistency in environments and characters, how I applied sound effects and music, how I recorded voiceovers and revealed the time I've spent creating every scene. If you already have the basics of After Effects, you can begin creating anime sketches like this immediately after watching this tutorial. If not, you can either learn it yourself or check out my AI animation course that is tailored to teach everything you need to know to bring AI pictures to life and create these amazing animations in the most beginner friendly way in less than 7 days. Let's begin. So the first scene illustrates a samurai arriving at a village. This is relatively simple to create as it's only required two majority images. The background with a Ghibli style house and a character showing a samurai from behind. So I started with the background picture by adding this black cat crossing the road. What I really did here was download a black cat green screen video from YouTube, remove the green screen background with Kilay tool, apply a fill effect to make it black, turn the layer to 3D so I could change the angle a bit and then make a copy of this layer and turn it into a cat shadow by decreasing the opacity. Finally I duplicated the background layer, maxed out the bush and put it on top of the cat layer. Done, the black cat is crossing the road successfully. Moving on, I uploaded the image to Photoshop, made the chimney a bit smaller, used generative expand to generate more sky and clouds and saved it as moving clouds file. Then reopened After Effects, masked out the sky and then inverted the mask to make the sky disappear, imported the moving clouds file, masked the sky in this image too and placed it under the background layer. So now I have the same looking picture but the sky layer is separated. In this way by using a position keyframe I made the clouds move gently, just like that. Next, I put the green screen smoke on the chimney, masked out the trees, which was quite painful task really, and made them sway in the wind a bit using a puppet tool. So the background layer is now animated. Let's bring the samurai. I mask out the character from the original Majorna picture and then using the position property I made him move up and down so the walking would be much more realistic if it were just moving in a straight line. Finally I keyframed the samurai walking with some Gaussian blur to make it easier for the viewer's eye to focus on the elements I want them to focus on. So the first scene of our animation is, wait a bit, done. Time spent, 1 hour, 13 minutes. Let's move on with the yard scene. From all the yard pictures I've generated, I've chose the one that best matched the house style from the first scene. I've scaled it with Magnific and simply copied the samurai with all the position keyframes so he would approach the house the same way as he did in the previous scene. I also added a green screen gecko to the wall as I thought that would be a really cool touch. Then I made a little girl appear to spy on the samurai and then silently disappear. To do this I duplicated the background layer, masked out the fence and placed it on top of the girl layer so her body would be covered. Time spent on this scene, 50 minutes. For the next scene I wanted to create a POV shot to show what entering the house would look like from the perspective of a samurai. So I took the background picture from the second scene and duplicated the layer 3 times. Now please listen carefully. The first layer will be the house wall without the doors. I mask the doors with the pen tool, invert the mask and the doors are gone. Now I take the second layer and mask only the left side of the doors. Then I do the same for the right side with the third layer. So in the end I have the same picture as before but now it's three separate layers that I can manipulate. I select the anchor point and place the anchor points of both door layers right at the sides of the doors here and here. An anchor point is a point around which the layer rotates or scales. Take a look. I convert the doors to 3D layers and then using the green arrow I make the doors swing to one side or another. But this is only possible because the anchor point is in place, otherwise it would look like this. So I keyframe the door opening over a period of a few seconds, make the doors blur out as they get closer, place the kitchen visual below all three layers, precompose everything into one composition and finally I apply the position keyframe so it would move up and down. This way this POV scene becomes not just super realistic but also my favorite scene in the whole sketch that I'm really proud of. 
Regarding the kitchen scene, as I already had a visual of a girl cooking, I needed to animate the girl to create the illusion of her cooking. And look, I really wanted to make it super fast and do it with Pika Labs or Gen 2, but after at least 20 takes on each tool, these were the best results I got. So I continued animating with After Effects, spent about 15 minutes playing with the Puppet tool and achieved this nice minimal movement. However, I knew there would be at least one scene where Pika or Gen 2 would come into play and do the job much faster than After Effects. It was super easy to animate, I just uploaded this picture on both tools and after a few tries, Pika gave me a really nice, smooth result. With the frying pan sound effect, it feels super cool. But the next scene was way more complex as I had to make these doors open. I spent an hour trying to use generative fill tool to generate a room with identical look and open doors, but then it just clicked to me that I can simply take the same door, mask it out, use 3D as I did with the main door, and then just add the missing part of the door with Photoshop gen fill. To make it open, I just put the picture with open doors just after the closed doors picture layer ends at my selected moment, so the door opened because the layer changed. Now, do you remember that little girl spying on the approaching samurai through the fence? She was the one who opened the door and ran into the kitchen to warn her sister about the stranger who came into their house. To create the scene, I had to make a background that would make sense. I knew I would spend at least an hour on my journey trying to create a consistent background, so what I came up with was a silly workaround that worked perfectly. I cropped this part of an image, masked the door and pulled it to the right, then did the same for this outside view. Didn't look good at first, but I easily fixed it with Photoshop Gen Fill. And here I have a really consistent background made out of sticks and rocks. Then I blur out the whole background to make the main character of the scene, this little girl, stand out. The girl was originally generated in this background, so I masked her out, scaled it a bit so it wouldn't look too static, and then animated her face by making her blink and talk. Blinking was super easy, I only had to draw a shape around her eyes, choose the same color as her skin, cut the layer and make it appear once or twice at my chosen moment. You can even add this funny sound effect to make it more cartoonish. And then it comes the talking part, aka the mouth animation. All the time I thought that's the only way to make it is by having different mouth shapes for different sounds, then use a specific software to match them with the audio to get a decent result. That's what professional animation studios do when creating anime or cartoons. But I just use a green screen mouth, though it's not the best way of animating, but it's just 100 times faster. So the little girl just warned her older sister and the sister reacts like that. The background here is the same kitchen picture already used in previous scenes, just a bit blurred. I generated the girl's visual with my journey and masked it out. I drew shapes as eyelids to create blinking, the same way as shown before. And then, the most important part of the scene was to make her eyes move up, creating a sense that the object she is looking at is huge and scary. To do that, I duplicated the girl's body layer, masked her eye pupils, then created a shape layer to hide the eye pupils on the main layer and placed the ones I just masked out on top so I could move them with a position layer from bottom to top. Easy and simple. However, I couldn't say that about this scene, which by far was the most complex one. I spent 4 hours on it and it was really painful. First, I had to generate the samurai's body from the front, but that was not easy as I already had him ingrained in people's mind from 3 previous scenes and I had to make sure the character's look is consistent. So I kept playing with my journey until I chose this character. Even though the appearance didn't match his back view perfectly, but as I had only 24 hours to finish it, it wasn't a bad choice for sure. I've scaled it with Magnific and then using a puppet tool and placing pins here and here, I created a briefing animation that gives even more more realism to our character. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Good. Let's move on and create a background picture. At first I thought about this option, but then it clicked to me that the most consistent background would be to place the same door he opened just behind his back. So what I did was this. I masked the doors in the original majority picture, decreased the brightness because the doors are viewed from inside the house and fixed the bottom with Photoshop. But way more difficult task was to create a camera motion in a way it would reveal my main character dramatically. I keyframe camera position and zoom so it would give you the results I wanted. I experimented for 2 more hours to get plenty of results I didn't like before choosing the one I was comfortable with. In the next scene, the older sister, her voice shaking with fear, asks the stranger, Who are you? What do you want? As I already had the scene set up, 
I just added a green screen video with more than 50 different animated mouths and chose the one I liked most. That's it. Next we have the samurai talking. At first I thought I would use the same green screen mouth. However, after spending more than 30 minutes testing different mouths, I didn't find any that looked appropriate. So what I did was, I uploaded the samurai's face to photoshop, generated the visual with his mouth opened, upscaled it with magnific and then just made the open mouth layer appear and disappear every half second. Even though it's super primitive, it works as it still gives the impression of him talking. For the next scene, I had the little girl speak as if she was hiding behind her older sister's skirt. I simply used the kitchen layer as the background, blurred it, then placed the older sister layer on top, used puppet tool to make briefing animation again, making it go up and down, brief in, brief out, and then placed the little girl in between background and sister layers. The blinking was already there, but I had to change the mouth animation from the previous scared expression to a happy one, which was quite easy, as I just chose another mouth animation from the same green screen video. The last scene was simple to complete, as I already had everything I needed. I just had to update the subtitles, add a camera zoom, and apply an anime effect using a green screen. When all the scenes were done, I had to come up with voiceovers. First, I tried AI voices, but after playing a bit with 11 laps, I gave up. The voices were too static and lacked emotion. As I only had 24 hours, I decided to use real ones. And just by accident, I met these two Japanese girls in my condo who agreed to become voice actors for my short anime sketch characters. I gave them an English script that they recorded in Japanese. At first, it didn't sound like anime voice. Listen. But then I softened the voice by speeding it up. That sounded perfectly. Listen. For the samurai voice, I found an amazing voice actor on Fiverr, who is hands down the best samurai voice actor you can possibly find. I put his Fiverr link in the description in case you need it for your project. Then I had to apply the sound design and music. This is an exciting process because if done correctly, it adds so much realism to the final result. When I look at my finished animation that has no sound effects, I always try to imagine what sounds it should possess if it were a real environment. If you see a person walking, you add the sound of footsteps. If the action is set in nature, you can add the sounds of bird chirping and cats meowing. If a door opens, just add the sound of door opening. You get it, it's simple logic. So, this is it. In total, I've spent 23 hours and 30 minutes creating this anime sketch. I still can't believe how much can be achieved using this simple and fast workflow and how many beautiful stories creative people could tell. Maybe you will be one of them? You can start practicing by downloading all the assets and majority prompts of this anime from the description. And just before we end this video with the final preview of my anime sketch, I want to remind you that if you lack animation skills but want to create anime like this, you can enroll in my online course and gain all the necessary skills in a week or even faster. And now, let's see the final video. ちょっとこっち来て。え。あなた誰どうしてここに来たの?怖がる必要はない。私はフレーマーから。あ、知ってる。フレーマーね。私YouTubeで彼のこと見てたわ。あなたは彼のチャンネル登録した。<笑>